Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The incredible James Webb Space Telescope launched about 11 hours ago, and uh, I just found out that we should be able to see it with our telescopes tonight. Um, tonight, and then in six days from now, when it deploys its enormous sun shield, uh, you should be able to see it again then. Um, but the, this website, unistellaroptics.com, they make the, the EV scope, I think, that extremely expensive all-in-one toy thing um but they've got a, a calculator here to calculate where you need to look in the night sky to see it so i put in my information here and at eight o'clock i'm going to start observing at eight o'clock this will be the right ascension and declination that i put in and it'll be 25 degrees off of the horizon it should be great it should be prime uh viewing so I'm going to go get things set up, and then we're going to try to see the James Webb Space Telescope with our telescope tonight. Okay, observatory is up and running. On all cylinders, I hope. Um, so, it should be visible now. It's just starting to come up over the horizon. And it is uh, 6.30. So, now I'm not sure. This this might be J now. This might be J2000. I'm not sure which coordinate system they're using here. But let's try to punch this in. 5, 12, 43... So five hours, 12 minutes, 43 seconds, and it was negative two. Yeah, this is right right near Orion. That is so cool. Negative two, 51 minutes, seven seconds, declination. And let's slew. I can hear the observatory whirling. She's moving. <clears throat> so I'm just going to watch it for a while and see if I can see any movement. I'll take a, you know, a few pictures, like 10 minutes apart, and then blink them and see if I can see any movement. And then we'll, I'll adjust the scope to get the framing so that it will move across the frame. And then we will try to go from there and just see if we can do a time lapse and catch it moving that's going to be fun okay so we gathered all our subs uh on the james webb space telescope and there's no point in stacking them because there's no there's no data to reveal um if we had a color camera and there was some something interesting in the frame there might be you know a point to, to stacking it trying to reveal the background and then show its trail across in front of it but there, there's really nothing interesting there to look at so all we're going to do is make a video of its motion and uh the first step to doing that is to star align everything uh so the background stable and we can see the motion of the telescope i already did that so the next step to that would be to comet use the comet align function Astro James Webb Space Telescope use the comet align function to align all of the frames on the telescope because I want the telescope to stay still and the, the stars to move in the background behind it. So we'll load everything up into blink and uh, make sure everything make sure there aren't any really bad frames or you know the, the illumination isn't changing. Just, we'll take a look at things. See, so I'm going to do a video with the stars in stable and the space telescope moving, and then a, a closer crop with the telescope stable and then the stars moving. Oh, well, honey, be careful. That is so, so cool. See, that zoomed in a little too much. I think that's that's probably a good crop for it so it started about here let's see where it ends up because i want the 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 
the path of travel to be kind of centered. So it looks like I've got to move the frame over to the right considerably. Okay, yeah, so it goes from here to here. So we we want this to go about right there, I think. And then we'll be able to transfer this level of, you know, this framing to the uh, the subs when we open the comment align tab. And then we'll also be, you see you've got this green rectangle in the blink screen. We'll be able to use that to crop these frames. There's one stinker in there. I'm just going to leave it. It's not a big deal. Yeah, okay. So it's going from about here to about here. That's good. Now let's, uh, I don't know if I should make this video first or, well, yeah, let's, uh, let's open up the Comet Align tab and align the frames on the telescope now. So we put in our registered subs. And now what we need to do is tell PixInsight where the telescope is in the beginning and where the telescope is in the end and it will interpolate its location across all the frames. All right, so we just finished our comet alignment. Uh, we can go ahead and close this and let's uh, release blink and let's reopen our comet frames. Load them up. Okay, so we just finished our comet alignment. Now we load everything back up into blink. And you can see that our that the, the set that the James Webb is staying still, but the background is moving. So now all we need to do is zoom in to the framing we want for this uh So we set up the framing that we want. Okay, well, thanks for getting away from us. So we set up the framing we want, and then we export these frames as a video. And then uh, we'll be all set. So we've got the framing we want, so let's go ahead and export these frames. Comment. into the comet frames folder comet aligned frames folder I'll run it okay now that uh, we've used blink to export all the uh, comet aligned frames it's a uh, real simple from here we'll just go and open up photoshop and open up the frames and you need to make sure you click image sequence because blink will number them and then if you open as image sequence it will import them as a video so now we've got our video timeline here it's all ready to go you press play you can see the telescope moving very nice you just go and click on this little tab right here and then you can render video and then render this, and then I'll do the same thing again to the comet aligned images, and then I'll just go into DaVinci and make a final video out of it. Real simple stuff. Anyways, I will show you the finished one in a minute. Mm -hmm.